Maybe you don't think I am successful at you, but I am doing just fine without a college degree. And I certainly don't need you to make a pro- wow. No! I really can't! Samaris, this is Kirby Marie here. Welcome back to my YouTube channel and welcome back to the Freshman 3. Yeah! And before we begin, as usual, I would appreciate if you guys would subscribe to the channel, ring the bell to get notified about the latest videos. Also, drop me that like button, it definitely helps out a lot. And leave your comments and your thoughts on this video or anything in general. Okay, so last episode when we left off, um, we spent the entire of that episode with James. Yeah! First, we started off with helping Gabriella babysit her her little kid, um, Enrique, um, and we had a like a pretty serious conversation with James because he wasn't dedicating so much time to us whatsoever. And James wanted to do things right. He still wanted to work things out, so that's why we gave him a chance to work things out. And then, but then that's when James still tells us that he only had a week left to move to LA to start with the movie shooting. And, you know, we spent the entire day with him, had a lot of fun, we even, well, you know, what oh. happened. <laughs> and then, uh, when James goes to the airport um, to say our goodbyes whatsoever, Jasmine comes and she obviously made a threat to us with our scholarship specifically that if we don't break up with James, she was gonna probably make up some bullcrap to Gabriela so she hates us or whatever. Wow. And yeah, now I'm worried. We, I mean, James doesn't plan to break with us anytime soon, but at the same time, I'm worried that Jasmine might do something just to get at you because she wants to be with James. But let's hope that's not the case. I don't know what's gonna happen. Point being, the freshman book three. With tensions high between Caitlin and Abby, will you be Yikes. able to make peace? So Abby isn't still over the whole friends of Caitlin. Wow. I told you that Abby's is stubborn. Chapter 10, caught in the middle. Yikes. A few days later, you meet with Professor Tia to discuss your progress on Professor Vasquez's book. Good afternoon, Kirby. Come in, make yourself comfortable. He shut the door and took a seat in front of Atiyah's desk. So I read your latest chapters. You didn't like them? I was going to ask if you're doing okay. It seems like you've been under a lot of stress lately. Yikes. Actually, things have been really hard. James and I were having problems even before he moved. Now he's gone and I can't stop thinking about... You abruptly stopped speaking as you remember Jasmine's threat. Yikes. How about how stupid I was to, to date an upper upperclassman? Do you really think... Did I really think what well, he was so special that nothing would get in the way? There's a reason why many comedies end with a wedding and many tragedies begin with one. So you're saying that relationships make you miserable? No! No! What I'm saying is they take effort. Kirby, I've been married for 15 years and I promise you it's all worth it for the right person. Thanks, and I appreciate you ch checking up on me. Anytime. Now regarding your writing, there's just one thing. What is it? The, the writing in these last few chapters seem cautious. There isn't much de detail. I'm guessing it's because you're wor wor worried about James not being there to edit. Try to be brave. I promise you have your own talent. Aside from that, this is coming along nicely. The bit about babysitting Vasquez's grandson was a fun read. Thank you, it was fun to write as well. Keep up the good work and I'll see you in a couple of weeks. Thanks, Professor T. I'll see you at your next meeting. Thank you! You return to the suit to find Abby sprawled out of the couch staring at her laptop. Hey, Abby! Hey! Uh, um, are you okay? I'm fine, I'm just frustrated, I guess. Kayla hasn't been in stats class for a week and a half, so Yikes. I texted her asking where she was. I got a text back saying she slept through it because she was up late with her band. And then I started what? thinking about the gutter kittens and ended up making myself mad. Abby, haven't you talked? Haven't you and Caitlin talked? I mean, I've tried, but she doesn't get it. It's like we're talking about different people. Like, okay, maybe I was a little too sensitive about those so-called jokes, but Caitlin is acting like these girls can do no wrong. It's like she doesn't get that even if they didn't mean to be rude, they're worse, they still were. I'm sorry, I shouldn't be bad-mouthing people, especially not your best friend. Hey. 
reach over and give Abby a hug. Abby, you're my friend too. She leans back and sighs. Hey, what if we try, try talking to Caitlin together? You know, since I'm close to both of you. You know that? You think that might help? Well, we ne we'll never know until we try. Besides, if she's been missing the class as much as you say, it really is time for a wake-up call. <laughs> totally, I'm really worried about her. Thanks for letting me vent. I've been a little star for a girl time lately. Same here, but hey, I'm done with my classes for the day and I don't have any plans, so we can girl talk all you want. Abby glances at the door. Actually, I think I'm gonna walk downtown, maybe head up to the arcade just to get off campus for a few hours. Clear my head. I'd love, to I'd love it if you come along, though. Like a friend date? Yeah, speaking of dating... What is it? Nothing, just that we got a lot to talk about, so are you in? Abby, I'd love to go. I haven't been to an arcade in a long time. You're gonna love it. Come on, get your stuff. You and Abby walk downtown and stop at the local arcade. You load up on tokens before taking a good look around. Man, I love arcades. Wow, this place brings, brings me back to my childhood. I know, right? There's a place just like it in Pittsburgh, where my sister and I went all the time as kids. That one didn't have a roller skating, though. How's your sister? Still getting bullied? A little bit, but she's doing so much better. She's made some friends on the debate team, and that seems to have been good for her. Nice. That's good. I know you two are really close. Yeah, that's a part of why I like this arcade. It reminds me of when we spent all of our, our it reminds me of when we spent all of our allowance on tokens for ski ball. Oh, so you're an expert. Well, I don't like to brag, but she struts up the ski ball machine and puts it into tokens. Let me show you how it's done. Abby cracks her knuckles and takes her first shot and lands in the 50-point hole in the center. Wow, Abby! You're really an expert! I'm just warming up. Watch this! She takes one ball in each hand and rolls both of them at the same time they go in the 100-point holes on either side. How do you do that? Very carefully! So, are you gonna play around? Of course! You put two tokens in the adjacent machine and spring to life. You pick up the first ball. I'm going for the 50 point hole. Wow, you might be as good as me! Woo, the, who the man or uh, woman? <laughs> <laughs> the ball bounces off the machine and lands in the 100 point hole on the next lane over. Well, I guess it did land in a 100 point hole. The machine spits out a long string of tickets. We're rich, Abby! Rich, I tell you! Hooray! Okay, my arms hurt. How about a disco dance rebellion? After an, hour of, uh, after an hour or two, we run out of tokens. You know what that means, right? Time to check out the prize booth? You walk over the booth and take a look around. Hey, look at this! You hold up a swan floaty. Okay, you have no idea how I, happy I am that that exists. Are you gonna get it? I don't know, I'm still looking. As you look around, a few objects that catch your eye. I want this one. I'm taking this swan floaty home, and I'm naming, it, I'm naming him Edwin. You're my favorite. Are you talking to me or Edwin? <laughs> yes. So what did you get, Abby? Two vouchers for slushies at the snack bar. To share? Maybe I want to drink both of them myself, but I guess you can have one. <laughs> oh, Abby. A few minutes later, you and Abby sit outside and drink your giant slushies. Feeling better? Much. Funny, I never thought I'd end up becoming that girl who only ever hangs out with her boyfriend, but I guess I kind of have. It's not just you. I mean, Kaylin and I have kind of been off in our own worlds lately. Yeah, I mean, I haven't even gotten to tell you that Tyler and I... Abby stops and looks away from you. Are you saying what I think you're saying? Yes, no! I don't know if you... What? What did you think I was saying? Abby stops and takes a deep breath. Ah! Tyler and I had sex for the first time last week. There, I said it! Wow, Abby! How was it? Do I have to answer that? You can spare me the gory details. Please do, actually. What I meant was, how did you feel about it? Oh, 
Okay, okay, right. Abby blushes and looks down. It was interesting. I was totally nervous that I would mess up and he wouldn't, you know, be good. But then I remember, oh yeah, it's Tyler. I love him. We can talk about this stuff. <laughs> Turns out he was feeling the same way, so we both agreed not to worry about it. Oh, really? And then what happened? I think that's for me to know and you not to find out. <laughs> Touché. But I think the best part was waking up together the next morning and realizing that we were still the same people. Everyone talks about what a big deal your first time is, and it kind of was, but it kind of wasn't. Turns out becoming sexually active doesn't cause you to stop being a dork. <laughs> That's a wonderful, Abby. Just don't forget. Just don't forget to lock the door. Oh man, imagine if Chris walked in. I think I got to do it. <laughs> I'm getting secondhand embarrassment just from imagining him. Just then your phone buzzes. Hey, if you're free, meet me at the coffee shop. I got something to show you. Speaking of Chris, looks like he wants me to meet him at the coffee shop. Are you ready to go back? Sure, I know a shortcut through town. We'll be back in like 10 minutes. I'm so glad we got to catch up. Thanks for inviting me along. Thank you for coming. Thank you. You arrive at the coffee shop to see Chris standing near the door. Hey, Kirby. Perfect time. We're sitting over here. Chris gestures to a table where Zig and Arjun are sitting. Hi, Kirby. Hey. Hey, guys. You order a coffee before taking your seat at the table. Chris has a slideshow queued up on his laptop. Presenting my newest student council proposal. The second chance scholarship. Now with 100% less clip art. Glad to see, glad to see you took my note about the font as well. Comic Sans was really distracting. <laughs> Chris and Arjun present a slideshow out outlining the details of a plan to offer scholarships to students who have criminal histories. What many people in this country don't realize is the way that one, even one criminal convention can ruin the rest of your life. Even after serving their time, many people find themselves unable to escape the stigma of a single mistake. The Second Chance Scholarship is meant to provide those in such a situation with a way out via education. Each year, three to five individuals with criminal convictions but otherwise exceptional academic records will be granted admissions to Hartford University and given a scholarship equivalent to that of an average student. To be clear, this is not meant and shall not be used as a reward for criminal activity. Applicants must have completed their full sentence and must submit a personal essay and two letters of recommendation. Recipients will also be required to meet their counselor regularly to make sure that they are adjusting to college life. Chris and Arjun continue outlining the details of the proposal and how it could be implemented. Finally, they turn to you and Zig. So, any thoughts? Yeah! Yeah! Have I mentioned... Okay. I don't know, where are you getting the money for this? Well, part of it would probably have come from the school's scholarship fund, but we're also looking into ways the school can earn grant money for this program. As for the donation portion, we will only use money from donors who have given their express permission to you for this. If a donor does not consent, we'll be sure that their funds are used for other scholarship programs provided by Harville. Any other questions, Zig? Yeah, are you out of your damn mind? Uh, no. Sick, I thought you of all people will appreciate our efforts. Chris told me you were the one who inspired him in the first place. Look boys, you're wasting your time. No one cares about this kind of thing. And even if they did, I don't need your pity. Our pity? Maybe you don't think I am successful as you, but I am doing just fine without a college degree. And I certainly don't need you to make a program for me. For you, the program is for anyone with a criminal record who served their time. Then why show me? Oh, I get it. You want me to tell you you're such great people for doing this? Six turns out without another word, you Chris and Arjun sit there looking at each other. Yikes. Well, that didn't go expected. Look. Sig makes a good point. Remember the textbook spending limit? I try not to. Realistically speaking, if that motion failed, then what are the chances of this one would succeed? We were going to ask you to help us present it, you know, serve as a familiar face, make it clear that this isn't just a Chris specific thing. We hope that using a personal first-hand account would make people more sympathetic to the cause, so that this really could change lives. So this isn't just about helping him then? 
of course not. I meant if it helps him, great. But it's not just about him. So are you gonna talk to him? I don't think so. Even if I could get him to listen, I doubt I could convince him to help me. Although, maybe you could. Huh? I guess you could say he's got respect for me. I've been getting to know him and a little... I know he's a little intense, but he seems to trust me. If anyone's going to be able to persuade to seek to help us, it's Kirby. I don't know about that, but I'll give it a try. Be back in a minute. You and Zig find, you find Zig on the sidewalk just outside of the coffee shop smoking a cigarette. So they sent you out there to talk to me. Of course they did. Zig? Yelling and storming out was uncalled for. They were trying to do something good and then he just put them down and left. I needed a smoke. Wow. He takes another puff. He snatched a cigarette out of his hand. <laughs> hey! Sick, listen to me. Hey, fine, just give that back. I, I need a smoke. You hold out the cigarette, he takes it back and puts it into his lip. Okay, Kirby, what? Chris and Arjun, we're going to ask you to help them move the proposal forward. Why? So I get disappointed when it fails? Just the opposite. They thought that if you were involved, they might stand a chance. Chris said that if you could show that there are real people who could benefit from this scholarship, people might start to care. Will they absolutely be wrong? No one cares about me. Hell, I hardly care about me. Sig. I care about you. Sig drops his cigarette and crushes it under his shoe, then turns to you. This is, this is really important to you, isn't it? Yeah. It is, Sig. Fine, I'm in. Because of me? Look, I have no reason to think it's a fool errand, but if you believe in it, so do I. Bruh. Let's get back inside. Smoke's breaks over, and I got a motion to save. Wow, this is that. I can't believe it, you came back. Yeah, and I'll help you out with the scholarship motion. Kirby is pretty darn persuasive. Welcome aboard. So I don't know how much Kirby told you about what we're planning, but we're thinking that you should come to the meeting with us today. Today? Do I have to, like, speak or something? If you want to, you can also just observe if you want. Get a feel for such what a student council is like. Cool, so when do I go? Well, the meeting starts in half an hour, so I'm thinking we might as well go now. You go ahead, I'll be there in a minute. Arjun nods and he and Zig exit the coffee shop, leaving you along with Chris. Kirby, thank you so much for talking to Zig, you really saved us there. Anytime, but do you really think he's going to be able to change anything? I do, I have to. I mean, we've got this slideshow and stuff, so it's not like it's our, he's our entire strategy, but I really think Zig could be a game changer. Plus, Sebastian ter Sebastian's terrified of him. Yeah. As he should be. I know it's a gamble, but I'm running out of other options. I'm proud of you, Chris. You're showing the world that he won't give up without a fight. I just want to make sure my presidency means something, but thanks. The two of you stand and start to pack your things. Oh, I also meant to ask you if you have plans before Caitlyn's concert tomorrow? No, why? Well, it feels like we've barely seen each other lately. I've had a niche to play mini golf. Sounds perfect. I thought you might say that. I'll talk to you later. Chris gives you a hug and leaves. You start packing up to leave when Caitlin comes in with Rachel. Hey, Caitlin. Hi, Kirby. Caitlin glances nervously at Rachel for a moment, but then hurries over to you and greets you with a hug. Uh, how has your day been? Not bad. What have you been up to? ready for my gig tomorrow, making decisions about the set list, that sort of thing. Yeah, I guess the preparation has been taking up a lot of your time. But it's gonna be so worth it. I can't wait for you to hear the new song we've been working on. Me neither. Hey, are you going to be back at the show tonight? I mean, I got a dress rehearsal, but I'll be at, at some point. Awesome, we've been missing you. Kaylin glances over her shoulder and sees Rachel standing near the front of the line tapping her foot. Yeah, I know. Hey, come on. I should go. I'll see you tonight, though. You watch Kaylin walk over Rachel before you head out the door. That night, you and Abby wait in the living room for Kaylin to come home. She paces back and forth. Do you think she's even going to show up tonight? No. She says she would. Well, it's 10 p.m. Yeah. But that's one of the things we're here to talk about. Yeah, I just hope it'll actually make a difference. Oh man, I can't wait for this confrontation to be over. You glance out of the window. Well, lucky for you, it looks like she's on her way up. It'll be fine, Abby. Kitten's our friend. Right. The 
Door swings open and Caitlin enters. Hey! Caitlin, we need to talk. Look, I really don't have time for this. I'm just going to take a shower and then I need to go. So this can wait? Wow. No! I really can't! Please, Caitlin. We're worried about you. Abby says you haven't been so statistic in over, in over, you know, way. Bruh. Yeah, it's a 9 a.m. class. The professor doesn't take attendance. Half the class usually skips. But you didn't used to be one of them. I've been tired. You wouldn't be if you weren't out, out all night with your band. Who do you think you are? My mother? Don't tell me what to do. Well, excuse me, I didn't realize that being cold, con concerned for someone who I thought was my friend was a bad thing. I never... Okay. Okay, you both need to calm down. This was supposed to be a talk, not a fight. Both of you need to cool it. Both of them take a few deep breaths. You know what? I can do this now. I'm too mad. Okay, fine. Can I go take a shower now? Sure, whatever, just go. Thanks. She pushes at past Abby and makes her way to the bathroom in a huff, slamming the door behind her. You turn to Abby, but she's already headed for her room. Yikes. Thanks for trying, but I think I just need to sleep on this, and I don't think I'm going to talk to Caitlin's concert tomorrow. Hey. But Abby! Abby shuts the door to her room, leaving you alone. Will Caitlin and Abby be able to reconcile, and will the second chance scholarship succeed? Keep playing to find out. Yikes. Yeah. Hey guys, thank, thank you so much for watching the clutch today. today. I'm, I'm sorry to turn it out here. here. I did it play a little more, more but, but the video was 40, 40 minutes long. long. Yeah, yeah, that was yeah. I was yeah. long. Yeah. 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 So I cut it out. The yeah. yeah. next part will be the YouTube. But, but if you guys enjoyed the video, drop me that like button. Subscribe if you haven't. And leave a comment and your thoughts on this video. And that'll be it. Love you all. And thank you. I'll see you next time. Bye.